56th day of the continued oppression, deliberate acts of terrorizing, inhuman lockdown and military siege faced by the innocent people in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In recent acts of state terrorism, the Indian occupation forces during the so-called cordon and search operations, fake encounters have martyred 14 Kashmiris, including Irshad Ahmadar, Sayyid Shakir, Nadeem Zaman, Jahangir Ahmad, Adil Hussain, Mohsin Ahmad, Shah Nawaz Ahmad, Faisal Mushtaq, Shakur Farooq, Shahid Ahmad, Mohsin Nabi, Uwais Ahmad, and Azaj Ahmad in Srinagar, Shopia, Pulwama, and Kulgam areas of the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan strongly condemns the unabated extrajudicial killings of Kashmiri youth by the occupation forces in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. These occupation forces have martyred more than 110 innocent Kashmiris during the past five months alone. The BJP leadership must realize that it is directly responsible for these politically motivated arbitrary killings of Kashmiris by the Indian security forces. International law prohibits the arbitrary deprivation of life and extrajudicial killings. This norm is codified in every major human rights treaty and convention. No illegal act, such as the AFSPA, can sanctify or provide legal cover to a crime recognized as such by international law. On the line of control, ceasefire violations by the Indian security forces continue unabated. As a result of recent violations, mortar and artillery shelling in the Hajipir and Bidori sectors, 13-year-old Ikra Shabir embraced Shahadat. While Zahid Abano and 12-year-old Saddam Rafiq have sustained serious injuries, all are residents of Mensar village. So far, in six months of this year, India has committed 1,440 ceasefire violations, resulting in 13 shahadats and serious injuries to 104 innocent civilians. We condemn the targeting of innocent civilians by the Indian occupation forces, which are in clear violation of the 2003 ceasefire understanding and in complete disregard for international human rights and international norms. Pakistan also categorically rejects and strongly condemns the baseless allegations made by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs as a pretext to seek a 50% reduction in the staff strength of the High Commission of Pakistan in New Delhi. We completely dismiss allegations of any violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations by the officials of the High Commission of Pakistan. Our diplomats and officials have always functioned within the parameters of international law and diplomatic norms. This latest Indian action is a part of India's desperate attempts to divert attention from its state terrorism and the worst human rights violations in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. India would be better advised to focus on its internal and external issues rather than creating diversions at the cost of peace and stability in South Asia. Pakistan has been consistently sensitizing the world community that irresponsible policies of the BJP government in India are increasingly imperiling regional peace and stability. Separately, on Pakistan's call, an emergency meeting, virtual format, was held of the OIC contact group on Jammu and Kashmir on 22nd June, which focused on the worsening situation in the Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In a statement at the emergency meeting, Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, apprised the OIC contact group members on India's illegal and unilateral steps of 5th August. 2019. He stated that the RSS-BJP dispensation in India 
was bent upon perpetuating India's illegal occupation of uh, Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir to pursue its Hindutva agenda. The Foreign Minister also welcomed the important pronouncements made by, by the OIC and its human rights body, IPHRC, which rejected India's illegal actions in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The Foreign Minister also highlighted that the adoption of the ministerial communique by the contact group further manifests the OIC's commitment to the Kashmir cause. The unanimously adopted communique of the OIC contact group on Kashmir reaffirmed its support for the legitimate struggle of the Kashmiri people for realization of their inalienable right to self-determination and freedom from Indian occupation. The communique rejected the newly notified Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Order 2020 and the Jammu and Kashmir Grant of Domicile Certificate Rules 2020, which are aimed at changing the demographic structure of the Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The communique also expressed concern over India's intensified ceasefire violations on the line of control. The contact group demanded from India to rescind its unilateral and illegal actions and allow the Kashmiri people to freely exercise their right to self-determination through a UN-supervised plebiscite. It also called upon India to halt its human rights violations, stop the indiscriminate use of force, lift the unabated military siege and inhuman lockdowns, and repeal dr draconian emergency laws and allow exercise of fundamental freedoms and release of all illegal detainees. It also asked India to stop any move towards changing the demographic structure of the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir as they were illegal and in violation of international law, particularly the Fourth Geneva Convention. The OIC contact group in its communique, also demanded that India provide unhindered access to the OIC, IPHRC, and UN fact-finding missions. The OIC Secretary General's Special Envoy for Jammu and Kashmir and access to international media to investigate into human rights violations in the occupied Jammu and Kashmir. And also to agree to the call made by the Office of the Human Rights Commissioner in its report to establish a commission of inquiry to conduct comprehensive, independent, international investigations on human rights violations. Separately, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and our missions abroad continue to facilitate and assist overseas Pakistanis across the world and facilitate their repatriation in accordance with a comprehensive plan devised in consultation with all stakeholders. During the past few days, 3,976 nationals returned from Saudi Arabia, 2,231 from UAE, and 263 from Iraq. As of 24th of June, 2020, 97,393 Pakistani nationals have returned home from more than 73 countries from across the world. Thank you very much.